Well, it seems like Amazon has officially gone crazy. When you look for a fuel filter on Amazon right now for your Sprinter, you put in your year, make and model. Uh, let's see, you get a fuel, a fuel filter that looks like this, a fuel filter that looks like this, one that looks like this, which is a little different from this one. Um, so you get a lot of different kinds and when you click into them, guess what? It's gonna say, ba -da -ba, guarantee fit. This fits your 2011 Freightliner Sprinter. Uh, what else? What if I click in here? Wow, an entirely different fuel filter with different size pins and connections and everything fits my 2011 Sprinter. Uh, let's do one or two more here. Um, this one, completely different. It says this one, guaranteed fit as well. Well, so Amazon, I will guarantee you that four out of five of these fuel filters that we've been looking at do not fit. What's going on here? Well, the fuel filters is just one of those parts that's so specific, you need to dive deeper. And that's what this video is about. If you own a Sprinter, you cannot simply type in your year, make and model and engine size and expect to get the right results on this specific part. So today we're going to talk about all the mistakes people make in purchasing a fuel filter and in installing a fuel filter. So what are you buying and how the hell can you decide which one fits your vehicle? Well, we're gonna talk about that in just a second. Anything between 2004 and 2009, you get to use this one. No exceptions, and again, this is US only, but there's, there's really no exceptions to that rule unless maybe you have the ultra rare 3.5 gas engine for that time period, which to be honest, no one really does. And, if you did, you probably wouldn't be watching this video. So, okay, that's simple. You have a pre-2010 Sprinter, you pick this one. Case closed. What happens when you have something, um, something newer? Well, the only way to do it is to pop open your damn hood. If you do two things, take a detailed picture and unplug the unplug your connector and count the number of pins it should either be four or five during those model years as soon as you do that you'll run into a few things and really all you're looking for um this is gonna this is gonna be most of them during this model years you're looking for something that uh resembles this Let me try and hide my face here okay one on the right has doesn't have a hose. One on the left will have a hose that comes with it. So if you see um, a top that looks like this, with or without a hose, you can be extremely confident that what you purchase online will fit your Sprinter. All right, so we've showed you how to pick out a fuel filter. Now we're gonna show you two major issues I see when people are installing these. This includes all of the videos I've seen on YouTube of people showing you how to install it. Mistake number one is using hose clamps to tighten them down. Uh, let's see, two hose clamps right here to tighten the rubber down. Now, if you're in a pinch and you need to do it, fine, use hose clamps, but there is a far, far superior way. And we're gonna show you what that looks like right now. Um, first off, the problem with using hose clamps is because every single fool out there, including myself, is gonna over tighten them. And when you over tighten them, they dig into the rubber and they'll cause a fuel leak later on. And you know, it could be six months later, it could be a year later, um, but ultimately it will mean, it'll mean you need to replace the hoses sooner than you actually than you should need to and it'll, it could mean a fuel leak and it could mean you're breaking down somewhere nobody wants to be the fool who didn't tighten the hose clamps enough everyone is going to over tighten them i guarantee you that including myself even though i i try my best not to if i'm using hose clamps i'll probably over tighten them a little bit 
Now, even though using hose clamps is the wrong way to do it, if you have to, if you're using hose clamps, one way to tell that you've tightened them enough is by, let's see, running your finger over the top and it should make a pretty continuous line between the hose and the clamp and the hose again. So the clamp isn't bulging out past the hose or if it was over tightened, it would be, you'd feel a big indention right here. Kind of like, kind of like this one right here. You see it's, it's so tight. You see it pinching the hose way too much. You don't really want to see that. So, okay. You're not going to use hose clamps because you follow sprinter fix and you're far more wiser now. So what's the next best thing or what is the best thing? These are the original clips it comes with. They fit perfectly. They're made for this the exact hose size. The only problem is if you want to reuse them, you need to buy this fancy pair of pliers. Now I say it's a fancy pair of pliers. It really only costs about between eight to 15 to maybe 40 bucks, depending on the quality you want. For 99% of you, you're going to want to pick the $8 one. So I'm going to include that uh, below. Now, uh, I will leave a, I'll try and overlay a video here showing you how it's done, but essentially these pliers allow you to, um, to get it back on. And if you flip it around, it'll help you, it'll help you take it off. So they're called clicker R pliers and they are magnificent. So, okay. You're not using hose clamps cause you're smarter and you're using the originals. Um, Mercedes is going to tell you that these guys are a one-time use, but that's not true. You can use them as many times as you want, unless you really mess them up trying to pull them off because you don't have the silly little pliers. So, okay. Your hoses are good. Now what? Well, the only other huge mistake I see people making is with this guy right here. Now, this is, of course, you see this um, this little piece right here? That is where the hose pops on. These are generally for the more, uh, most of what I've seen in these is like the 2014 to 2016s, but again, of course, you can't go by your make and model. My customers were getting this done at Mercedes. And then they'd call me up a little while later asking me, hey, can you come over? I have fuel leaking. This line is pressurized. It has the same amount of pressure as the lift pump. So it's not crazy pressure, but it is there. So it will cause a mess if it's not on right. I like to use a zip tie just to make sure, but you really got to pop it in and feel the, feel the click, hear the click. And I'll include that here. Uh, I'll try and include the video. Well, sometimes you drive an hour all for um, a simple fuel leak caused by the water separator. All because this thing right here wasn't installed properly and the customer was leaking oil, leaking uh, diesel all over the place. One last thing, when you are ordering, some people are going to be concerned about the brand. They want dealership level. Well, I've mentioned this quite a few times on my channel. Dealership level um, supplies doesn't always mean one thing. In this case, it can mean three or four things. What do I mean by that? Well, I have a, I have a mall. The German brand, I hope I'm saying that right. Um, mall filter, it's made here in Michigan and it has a Chrysler badge on it. Um, awesome. I also have a Hengst here somewhere and a Bosch uh, and a man. Here's, here's an example of a man. This one is a man filter. The paint is so faded on this, I can't show you. 
It's a man filter, but it also has the Mercedes badge on it. And that's the perfect example of, um, of when a dealership uses multiple suppliers. What does that mean for you? Well, when you're buying online and you see brands like Man, Bosch, Mall, or Hengst, those are the big four. I know there's probably a couple other suppliers. You're good. You know you're getting top-notch. Um, you know you're getting dealership level quality. So just get those if you're concerned about it. If you want to go cheaper, that's fine. I've used cheaper ones on my own vehicles like everything else. I don't use it when I'm putting it on another person's van. On a customer's van, I generally like to spend the extra 10 or 20 bucks just because uh, um, that way we both have peace of mind, right? All right, if you've been following, if you've, watched, if you've gotten this far, great. Go and subscribe. You're likely a Sprinter owner and... I do everything I can to show you how to fix and maintain your sprinters the right way.